they were ordinary teenagers. Until they discovered evolution. Points for spelling. And scientists and Scientologists, too. Throughout the second half of the 20th century, spectacular hey, look, technologies Einstein's revolutionized career. scientific understanding of the cell, mm -hmm. the basic unit of life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. During an interview mm -hmm. with biochemist yep. Michael Behe, oh. Stone oh. learned how this new knowledge has shaken the foundations of Darwin's theory. In the 19th century, when Darwin was alive, uh, scientists thought that the basis of life, the cell, was some simple glob of protoplasm, like a little piece of jello or something that was you see, not hard to explain You see, the cell is like an irreducibly complex in the 20th century, jello we've wooden seen pop. that the, the cell is far Theo. from simple. It's, it's got very complicated molecular machines and things that are very resistant to Darwinian explanation. Rudy! Michael Dear Beaton Santa, has devoted I would his like career an argument to the study of the design and scientists. operation of the cell. He has also written extensively on the biochemical challenge to evolution. Most people have no idea of how, how small and complex cells are. Most people a also have no idea how Tom Cruise is getting... cell from you or me called a eukaryotic cell I don't is carry on probably if you a don't tenth carry on of the it. size of the head of a pin. And yet, in that single cell, there are... Move it! Out of the way! I'm still eating here! ...units of DNA making out the chromosomes. And those three billion units make the molecular machines of the cell, literally machines that make the cell work. With computer animation, we can enter the cell. Subway! Here, the staggering complexity of its molecular machinery is clearly seen. It's like going into an automobile factory. The factory has a large number of machines. The parts have to fit together in very specific ways to do their jobs. And if things go wrong, the cell is in big trouble. And just one cell is enormously complex. But humans, you and I, are made trillions of cells. And those trillions of cells have to fit together in the right way and do their own job. Darwinism was a lot more yeah, Darwinism when was we great were thinking about called that of protoplasm than it is when we're thinking about molecular machines. A remarkable rotary motor. I remember the first time I, I looked in a biochemistry textbook and I saw Last a week. drawing of something called a bacterial flagellum with all of its parts and all of its glory. It's had a propeller and, remember and to a change your side region and the, every the three drive thousand shaft miles. and the motor. And I looked at that and I said, that's an outboard motor. That's designed, you know, that's no chance assemblage of, of parts. Wait, since when is the cell membrane made Bee's out of burlap? reaction was not surprising, especially when the bacterial flagellar motor is animated and magnified more than 50,000 times to display Kevin, the details the of its construction and operation. I can't handle it! It's gonna blow! And Howard Berg at Harvard has labeled it the most efficient machine in the universe. These ah, ah, ah. are running at 100,000 RPMs and are hardwired into a signal oh, transduction. I get it. So inside each mechanism. of us is a molecular so biologist in denial. The environment. It's got some tail proteins which act as the propeller. When the flagellum rotates, ah. these push against the water and guys therefore keep push the in bacterium there. forward. And the motor hey. uses a flow hey. of acid from hey. outside of the cell to the inside of the cell to power the turning. The bacterial flagellum has two gears, forward and reverse, water-cooled, proton motive force. It has a stator, it has a rotor, it has a U-joint, it has a drive shaft, it has a propeller. It's not it has power steering and a 600,000 mile warranty. Their function. In all, about 40 different protein parts are required to build a flagellar motor. Since its discovery, Biologists have tried to understand how a machine of such superb design could have arisen gradually, without foresight or plan, through the biological pathway Darwin It's called envisioned. a type 3 secretion apparatus. Other bacteria have them. I think what Darwin was trying to show was that things that look designed aren't really designed, but that we can find naturalistic processes to account for the complexity of life. Darwin theorized so that every look under a microscope at a cell and say, evolved through natural this looks selection, hard. Fuck it, a blind it. process that acts upon random changes in the cell. Darwin believed that time, 
These random variations oh, would transform the one. simplest cells into the great diversity of life that inhabits our planet. In his study of evolution and molecular machines, Michael Behe has raised a significant challenge to the creative power of Darwin's mechanism of natural selection. It is called irreducible complexity. Irreducible complexity was coined by Mike Behe in describing these molecular machines. Basically what it says is that you have multi-component parts Behe to any given organelle anal or system brain of cell. Leakage. All and which hallucination are necessary for that function. the imaginary beings are mumbling. That is, if you remove one part, you lose function of that system. Irreducible complexity can be illustrated by a familiar non-biological machine, a mouse trap. The trap is composed of five basic pieces. A catch to hold the bait. A strong spring. A thin bent rod called the hammer. There's any example of atheism on this planet. A holding it's bar to secure coyote. the hammer in place. He prayed every day, but he never caught that road runner. And a platform upon which the entire system is mounted. If any one of these parts is missing or defective, the mechanism will not work. All components of this irreducibly complex system must be present simultaneously. Oh yeah, I remember just last week I killed a robotic mouse in my kitchen. Catching mice. The concept of irreducible hey. complexity hey. also applies hey. to biological machines, including the bacterial flagellum. All told, there are about 40 different protein parts which are necessary for this machine to work. You can't Editing. put something like that together gradually because they need a large number of shit. parts We're gonna interacting use it again. with each other at the same time before they work at all. Without the tools to observe the machinery of the cell, and long before the idea of irreducible complexity, Charles Darwin offered a way to test his own theory. In Origin of Species, he wrote, If it could be demonstrated that any complex organ existed, which could not possibly have been formed by numerous, successive, slight modifications, my theory would absolutely break down. Darwin so in his own book, he actually acknowledged he might be wrong? That could Unheard of! Constructed in Heretic! Over Burn him! Time, then his theory would be invalid. And what Michael Behe and others have discovered is the existence of biological machinery that cannot be explained away by Darwinian processes. Darwin's failed Nor can this sudden cut away from my portrait shot while I'm making the crooks of my argument. Theory. 